Back inside to wrap up the basketball season as it is completed as of two Sundays ago with the men's basketball team taking it to the second round of the NIT. Derek Sharp, Kaylee Cottrell, and Joey Johnson, not just the NIT, but we'll wrap it all up with Amir Abdurrahim. These two are going to sit down with Jaden Reed, who was fantastic as a freshman. Later on, we'll speak to some members, speaking of fantastic, of track and field. And in our final segment, we'll sort of catch up on everything else that's going on in USF athletics. We're going to keep it to basketball here. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, some drama with the women's basketball coach. Uh, at least it was a short-lived drama, and we get to still have Jose Fernandez around. But, Joey, again, we start with you because you've been around for all the games. You get to go on the road with the team. And I know, and you'll, I'm sure, hear the coach say the same thing. They had plans for the bigger tournament. But I thought it was still a darn good year and a pretty darn good two-game experience in the NIT. Oh, yeah, and the whole thing was, I think, one of the more fun things I've ever done, more memorable for sure. I'll remember it until next year's NCAA run. But, um, but it, was, it was a great joy and, and to, just to see how the team grew, to get to know all the new players and to see how they, they gelled at the right time. Um, it was fabulous. And then, when, and then, of course, the fans selling out games and the energy in the building was, was unmatched. So the whole thing was about as memorable as you could get. And I would argue, I mean, I know if FAU and UAB both made the tournament, UAB beating the Bulls in the, in the conference tournament semis and then taking off Temple, taking down Temple, which it upset FAU. But, again, you would prefer to go to the first, but they both had really heartbreaking losses, including in overtime. And we got to experience the opposite of a heartbreaking loss <laughs> in Orlando. The memories were rekindled of the good old War and I-4, right? Yeah, no, it was, it was great. And it's always like it's, it's uh, you know, hey, what if you get all the way in the NIT? Is that better than losing in the first round of the NCAA? Well, again, you don't go into the NCAA planning to lose in the first round. So, uh, but... If you aren't selected for the NCAA and you get some NIT memories, that's uh, about as good a consolation as you, as you could get. And, of course, it was a, a win at UCF, which was incredibly satisfying for the fan base and a great road performance. And then one more home game, a bonus home game against BCU didn't go the way we wanted, but another great atmosphere and, and just a lot, of, a lot of great hope for next year. And that atmosphere is something that I know you got to take in Kaylee Cottrell along yeah. with a lot of fans. <laughs> Felt like a sellout there. Yeah. And uh, you're going to have some video proof of it today, right? Yeah, feature this week on that game. I talked to MK about it. I talked to one of the SoFlo Rodeo leaders, talked to a donor, talked to MVS, uh, who's in attendance courtside. And, man, all the hype around it. They were all so excited. And just to see this team, yes, grow together, but also grow this campus and this community and the impact that they've had uh, been super cool all season to see. You mentioned Michael. I do a, a weekly radio podcast with him, and I wanted to bring it up to him, but actually beat me to it as far as talking about the basketball knowledge of the crowd and how he was so impressed uh, with that part of things. Uh, we mentioned it. Uh, Jose Fernandez might have got courted by another school, but uh, he is staying strong a bull. And I know, Joey, you probably had the same thought process through the whole thing, like, okay, it's bound to happen. Thank goodness it didn't. Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, Jose Fernandez uh, at USF women's basketball is a natural fit and hard to imagine otherwise, um, 24 years now. And I know, you know, before he rides off into the sunset, he wants to <laughs> do some damage in the NCAA tournament. There's unfinished business. Um, and uh, we're glad that he's going to be able to be here to finish that business. And I know he's rejuvenated and ready to ready to go for next year so uh you know we had a, a brief little flirtation there maybe but uh you know jose at usf is is where it needs to be and right in the middle of the ncaa tournament final four set for both i don't know about you guys but uh, sometimes that last loss is tough to take but i'd turn on the tube the next day and have just been watching wall-to-wall -wall basketball yeah, it's it's it, what a great time of the year for basketball, for men's and women's basketball, and it's it's still going on as we speak. We're coming off seeing the amazing Caitlin Clark Iowa LSU game. We got a great men's Final Four on tap, and and the women are in Cleveland. And let's not forget the women are in Tampa next That's year right. for the women's Final Four. So this is a warm up act, and the game, uh, the women's game has never been more healthy. So what we're going to get in Tampa is going to be at the absolute apex of the sport in terms of ratings and interest and, 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 and sellout crowds and whatnot. So it'll be a great time for that event to be in Tampa. I know Rob Higgins, who's the leader of the Tampa Bay Sports Commission, and his whole crew is headed to Cleveland. And, yeah, that, that's a good reminder that we are a year away from that. And 
from what I understand, Jose's got a roster and putting together a threat to make it there. I know they played a bunch of teams that made the Elite Eight, the NC State team that's in the Final Four as well. I will say if Jose has a roster that can get to the Women's Final Four in Tampa, that will be my most memorable thing I've ever yes. seen in my life. So let's, let's do it, Jose. Let's, let's all, do it. Let's all do it all next year. Here on this hour or so, we're going to sit down one last time with head coach who also speaks with Jaden Reed. And I'll be joined by a couple members of the fifth ranked in the country outdoor men's track and field team. So don't go anywhere. We are just on the way on Bullseye. Well, for the last time, we're going to talk to Amir Abdurrahim this season anyway. But I got to say, um, Coach, tell me if you disagree. It seems like in a very positive way I say this, that the men's basketball season felt like it was the longest season because to me it entailed, the beginning of it entailed your beginning and you're showing up and just the sort of buzz that was starting to build. And then the season itself seemed like it was so long because we're looking at the very beginning of the, the year when so many things were different. And uh, it was a good long season to me. No, it was a, it was a great season. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoy, um, like I'm a big fan of music and <laughs> the song I've been listening to over the last year is by the, the artist Her, called The Journey, right? And, and the, journey, the journey is the gift. You know, like the season is the gift. You know, the, like winning a championship, you know, sharing the moments you, we share with, with not only our fans, but with the guys. Like, it was fun, man. But when you think back on where we started, you know, South Carolina State was a ton of fun. But then you, you go to Central Michigan, and now everybody's like, oh, this dude can't coach, he can't do this. He can't. But, like, for me, that's the fun part, you know, because now it's like how do you get your team to respond? How do you keep them together? Can you get them to believe? And just in that moment from, you know, Central Michigan but on to the, the main game, you know, the Hofstra UMass, you know, I was really proud of our staff, and I was proud of myself, you know, to be honest. Um, to be able to keep that group together, trusting each other, and then eventually that trust turned into belief in each other. And when you when you can believe in each other, man, whew, you can have some fun. I know you get receipts, and when you mentioned Central Michigan, Michigan and Maine, I almost forgotten. Again, it's been so long. I probably am on social media too much, but a couple things were to uh, the effect of the Bulls have no talent. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, I, I got them. <laughs> I just chose to remain humble and not call people out, you know, and like, and it's, you know, I think it's, it's like so funny. I, I just tweeted something out the other day and not, and I didn't do it for attention or anything like that. But I, I just think, man, like I know as fans, right? Like you, you want to see the team do well, but like, to be a fan, man, you got, you got to be in it for the ups and the downs. Don't be fair weather, you know? And, because I, I just think about NC State, man, it's crazy. Three weeks ago, wow. you know, people were calling for Kevin Keats's job. This dude's got his team in the Final Four. That's real coaching. Like, he a real ball coach, right? That's real coaching. You know, when you go through, you lose the last three or four, whatever they lost of the season, and now and they're on a, what, eight, eight or nine game run. You can't beat it. That's the same thing with us, you know. I know losing at home to Maine and, and Central Michigan, and then going up on that East Coast road trip to Hofstra and UMass, it wasn't fun. To, it wasn't fun to be part of or watch, maybe. But honestly, if we never go through those moments, does it make winning a championship like that much sweeter? Like being able to see a team grow, even at, like for a coach, for sure. But I, I, you know, I'm a fan of sports as well, and I grew up a Braves fan, right? And to, watch, and to watch the Braves grow over the years, you know, even when they were winning their 14 pennants, you know, and then the breakthrough and winning the championship a few years ago, like as a fan, it's the fun thing to watch. Coach, um, when you're going through it, you're in the weeds, you're, you're consumed with the next game. Now that you're removed from it, what stands out to you about the whole thing? What have you reflected on the last week or so that you could only do now that you had the time to do it? Well, I've slept a lot. <laughs> um, just being honest, I slept a lot. I don't Good blame you. But, but what I've reflected on more than anything was each individual guy. And the guy I just keep coming back to, man, is Corey Walker Jr. Wow. Man, 
I'll never forget when I got the job. And I don't say this to embarrass Corey, but like, man, I, I remember asking him, like, hey, what are you, are you working out at all? Are you lifting? Like, what are you doing? Because like, just from a conditioning standpoint, he was so far out of shape. And to watch him from June 1st, when they got here, when the rest, when the team got here for, for summer workouts to the last game, and it was unfortunate we didn't get to have him in that last game. We mm. missed him against UAB because Corey, from a physicality standpoint, I think he could have he could have gave those guys enough resistance that allowed us to get down and really help in the post. And so not having him, like he goes from being a guy that we weren't sure we can count on, you know, every day to a guy that man we missed him, <laughs> you know, just so just to see his growth and the confidence that grew in him. That's that's for me. That's what coaching is about, like just to see those guys grow. And I want to ask one more thing about Corey because we've been around him for a couple of years and a, 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 a mercurial talent. But again, you're not quite sure what you're going to get on a daily basis. But it was amazing for those of us, uh, me for sure, just to watch him smile. Yeah. To watch yeah. how much fun he was having. Yeah. And, and he did mention at the end of the year how much he loved being part of this right. team. Right. So I, I certainly saw the transformation as well. No, it was awesome, man. You know, and it's not easy for a guy like Corey. And so to our fans, you know, I want you to understand this. Corey is a former top 75 player in the country. You know, started at another school with, I'm sure, goals and aspirations of doing great things, you know. And sometimes it just doesn't go exactly how you want it to go. But when you see Corey Walker, you give him a hug, pat him on the back, tell him a good job because he could have quit, all right? But, you know, his mom and dad obviously are great people because they raised a son who, who didn't quit. He stayed the course and broke through, you know. And Corey Walker, you know, is going to play a lot, of, a lot more really good basketball here at USF. Uh, last time we talked to you, it was after net cutting down. So it was headed to Tulsa, I believe, and then obviously the conference tournament. And uh, going into the conference tournament, the day before, I believe, I think, A-10 and maybe at other conference, Mac, don't quote me, uh, the, the eight beat the one. Yeah. And I'm thinking, that can happen. For uh, sure. You guys lit it up against East Carolina, and I know UAB is a very talented team. So let's, before we get to the NIT experience, yeah. sort of take take people back through the, the end of the regular season. Of the conference yeah, tournament. yeah, no, like I, I have no issues with with how it how it went because, again, I didn't complain or say anything when we were on a 15-game win streak or a six-game win streak. I didn't complain or, or I, didn't, I didn't gloat. You know, it, it happens like that sometimes. And we play in a really, really tough conference, Absolutely. in my opinion. And so um, I, wasn't, I wasn't surprised with how we played against um, East Carolina in the least bit because those guys, they had been on a, on a, on a neutral court before. Uh, against a really good team in Florida State, and they performed. And, uh, you know, man, like, <laughs> they just went. They, I thought our, our ability to share the ball that day was incredible. Um, and just their unselfishness, their willingness to give up good for great was awesome. And then UAB, you know, again, not being full strength that game, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I don't want to take anything away from UAB's performance. They did a great job. Um, they did what I thought a lot of other teams would have done. They just stuck with the one three one, you mm -hmm. know, um, which you know I told as I told the guys, man, like that's a sign of respect. The team feels like they got to do this just in order to play with you, like they because they had played majority man all year, and for forty minutes they 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 stayed in that one three one, and so really good coaching by them. I I got to be better, and I will be, um, you know, getting them prepared. Uh, for for whatever anybody throws at us. But, man, as I told the guys, you know, after that game, nobody in here is going to hang their head. Nobody in here is going to um, act out of character. We're going to remain in character because when we were going through good times, it was it's easy to have, you know, a good attitude. Well, we're going to show everybody what South Florida is about, and we're going to walk with our heads high and be about the right things. And then – that leads into Selection Sunday. You're hopeful your name is called. It isn't sent to the NIT. Not only that, sent on the road yeah. to play UCF, yeah. which some fans were, were grinding their teeth over. 
but and, and this is another thing I'll remember this team for. You, you go on the road and you win the game. It was your eighth road win of the year. Yeah. You went and just took care of business. And I know you, you had a mindset. You weren't going to complain. You are just going right. to take care of business. What, what will you remember about that UCF game and that experience? Well, I'll start with Selection Sunday. Um, I'll start with, I just, I just think it's uh, interesting uh, how the committee makes the selections, right? We were left out, they said, because of our strength of schedule. What they don't take into account, we inherited a schedule, right? Um, like, you don't schedule in June and July. Like, teams are working on schedules in December, January. And so we inherited a schedule that the previous staff had put together. So you penalized us for something we didn't have. It was already contracted. Like, you know, my wife's a lawyer, man. Like, you know, <laughs> and she, she talks about it all the time. Don't break no contracts. <laughs> you know, we, like, you know, let's let's make sure we save our money. And I'm like, yeah, I hear you. Slim. <laughs> you know, but again, it's just one of those things where um, a little disappointed. But now as the leader, how do you respond? Because if I'd have walked in there disappointed, right. down, they would have taken that attitude into that road game. I walked in there grateful. I walked in there thankful for the opportunity to coach that group another day, you know, a couple more practices. No declining the invite either. No doubt. No, no. declining the invite. And no. again, that we'll get to that another day. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock with you know, I know they're trying to make it better, but at the same time too. You know, to be able to go on the road, and I had heard about the war on I-4, you know, a few times, but to be a part of it, like, man, it's a real rivalry, yeah. you know, and um, for us to go in there and perform like that, I wasn't I wasn't surprised, you know, um, at like in the least bit, but it, that was a big-time environment. <laughs> it, was. it was a big-time win and uh, was just really proud of that group. Um, Eight road wins is is yeah, a lot. It's, a lot. So, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, all the win categories you guys broke the records for. It's a, it's awesome. And I know you couldn't really reflect on that during the course of the season. We'll do that before we're done here. Uh, first of all, you mentioned great rivalry and schedules are set in advance mm -hmm. before we get to the last game, which I thought was an awesome, just was. An awesome environment. Uh, what's what can people know about next year's schedule and Nothing. down the road? Can UCF be on it? They can't know anything about next year's schedule because. They're not contracted yet. Okay, okay. They're not okay. signed Everybody yet. in trouble. What's your philosophy about a non conference no, schedule? No, 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 no. Now, That's like, question, you know, yeah. um, when you win 25 games and you still don't get an at large, um, and, they, and they say it's because of your strength of schedule, now, you know, we've got to go schedule to, you know, not crazy. You know, I don't want to go crazy with it, but we want to make sure that. Um, we challenge ourselves because our goal is to play in the NCAA tournament deep into March, just like we did this year, and you know, and ultimately, you know, into April. And so we got to challenge ourselves, and we're going we're going to do our best to do that. Um, it'll be interesting, though. Everybody, I say, everybody wanted to. I'd never forget getting a job, and everybody's calling like, "Hey, you want to play?" Yeah, we didn't have a roster. Yeah, <laughs> call us now. Yes. Yeah. Call us now. Same number. How, how, yeah. how, how hard is it to get games with, with a team like this that is is a threat to anybody? It's challenging. <laughs> it's challenging. And <laughs> it, it might not be loaded with home games if, if the other uh, side wants it their way. Yeah. Uh, I want to speak of being a home. I'm so glad. I know you won an NCAA tournament, but I'm so glad that win happened in Orlando because we got that one last home yeah. game. And even though it wasn't the sellout, it felt like one. And it looked like one. Mm -hmm. And more importantly than that, not just the SoFlo Rodeo and the look and the feel, but the basketball knowledge. Yeah. It was how you want it to be. I yeah. mean, not needing to see the Jumbotron say, get loud or clap your hands or anything like that. Not uh, harassing the other team, like in some of the Blue Blood places, it gets too intense. It was just perfect. They knew when to, when the defense needed to stop, et cetera. I thought it was a great environment. So just like a team grows, a fan base grows, mm -hmm. I remember South Carolina State, you know, I remember, um, I'm just trying to think of, like, I remember the Charlotte game, it sticks out, because it was, it was the first sellout, and I remember at times during that game, like, we'd be going on runs, and it was almost like we didn't know what, like, our crowd, our fans didn't know what to do, mm. right? But 
to see the the growth of our fan base over over the course of the year. Like you said, like what they what people don't realize is that VCU game. As I said to the guys, our our goal is the NCAA tournament. Just so you know, that's what a first round NCAA tournament game feels Felt like. like it. That's what it feels like right there. Where you just there's no there's no room for error. You know, there's no room to make a mistake. Like there's no such thing as perfect, but we got to play as close to perfect as possible, you know, because when you're playing those, you know, in the NCAA tournament, you're playing one of the best 68 teams in the country in that first round. And your execution has to be on point. Your uh, connection has to be on point. Your unselfishness has to be at an elite level because the one time you don't make the extra pass to give up good for great, it can cost you, you know, whether it's a turnover or a missed shot. And so, you know, just like the Charlotte game this year prepared us for the FAU game, right? Just like going on the road to Hofstra and UMass prepared us to go on the road to, you know, Temple and North Texas and so on sure. and so forth. The game, the season is always giving you opportunities to grow. And the thing that I'm thankful for and I'm, is why we didn't d turn down the, the uh, or decline the, the NIT invitation is because we were still, if you remember, I said it's about growth and humility. We're, we were still trying to grow and we were still trying to find the humility that, to add to that DNA of our program going into next year. This is not, it's not going to be a one, <laughs> a one year thing. Like, like we're here. Coach, you're not only looking for games for next year, but you got some spots on your roster. You're looking for some players. You, you, you won 25 games, you won a conference title without like a true five-man, you know, the traditional five-man, so you can, you can do it. But is, is getting that type of body a priority on your roster? And, and part two, you mentioned Daniel Tovaloba the other day about how, how he's coming along. Where might he fit into that sort of traditional center mix for, for next year? You ever seen a Bill Belichick interview? <laughs> I've been a part of a few. I've been a part of a few. Yeah. Yeah, on well, to Cleveland? On to Cleveland. Okay. Yeah. On to Cleveland. Okay. You know, because I think, you know, everybody, I think, looks at our team and they're like, this is what we need. But, guys, we just won 25 games. We sure. just won a championship with what I guess some people would say is a non-traditional lineup. Yeah. It, man, it's not about – it's about players. It's about the Jimmys and Joes, not the X's and O's for sure. Right, but what it's about is getting 15 guys that are going to believe and buy into what the ultimate goal is. Um, I believe this, like, wholeheartedly. I could put Chris Youngblood at the five <laughs> with four other really good players, and we're going to have a chance every night because I know that dude's buy-in is at a high level. So is the way you play and the way the game has gone made it less of a – of a thing to have that, you know, that, that no. kind of that box, that five guy that we're, we grew up watching. No, like I think you got to have different pieces to be able to play different ways, right? You, you, when you look at the final four right now, Purdue, NC State, Alabama, and UConn, the team that's going to win the, the national championship is the team because it's four really contrasting styles. You gotta have, you gotta be able to adjust. You gotta be able to play different ways. Yeah, you gotta be who you are at your core. But the best teams are able to adjust, right? They're chameleons. They're able to adjust and play and adapt to any type of style. And so, uh, we whether it's Daniel or we address it in recruiting, we want to be able to have a a primary focus in the post that we can throw the ball to. You know when the jump shots are falling when we're not playing um, as well on the perimeter as we would like. You got to have it because you got to be able to play different ways, win different ways. That's why, again, we miss Corey Walker against UAB, you know, because you could, we could have thrown the ball into Corey Walker and got some of their bigs in foul trouble. We didn't have them. So we, yeah. But just to clarify, you could use an ED type on your roster. You could find a spot for him. Yeah. <laughs> those, those dudes aren't walking around every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they kind of stand out when they do. And yeah. hey, you mentioned it before, uh, you know, just watching some of the games. And, uh, and he mentioned also getting some sleep. So, yeah. A, what contact do you have with the players? Uh, do they finally get a little bit of a breather right now? 
B, tell us about some basketball you've been watching because it's been pretty good these days. Yeah, no, they, they, the guys have they've, they've had a break. Um, they didn't get spring break, and they've done such a great job in the classroom that this just this past week we let them have a long weekend. We let them – they had to get their work done, you know, to, to be dismissed, but they, and they did. So they had from Thursday till Sunday. Um, to That's go great. home, and it was just, you know, the fact that they were able to spend Easter with their family, it was awesome. Um, but, yeah, basketball, I've watched it all. You know, I'm, I'm not one of those guys that, you know, needs a needs to decompress or not watch or it hurts. It hurts, to be honest, like Chris Chris, Young, Chris Youngblood actually <laughs> FaceTimed me the other night, like, Coach, man. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I hear you, you know. But I watch, I watch all of it. I've watched the NIT. I watched um, – I watched the NIT, I watched the tournament, I watched the women's tournament, oh, fantastic. you know, and just to see, you know, how good Coach Staley's teams are, man, and how how disciplined, how good they are at executing. It's been fun, you know, to watch Caitlin Clark put on, put on the show she put on. You know, it's like, it's really cool. She's a, she's a, I say a throwback a little bit, um, you know, I, I grew up watching Allen Houston and Steve Smith. Not super athletic guys, but both could really shoot it. And they could both get you off balance just enough to get their shots off. And that's her. Like, she, she has a great handle, and, she, and like she can get to her shot pocket really quick. And so just to watch her play chess, not checkers, <laughs> right, during the game, it's, it's really cool. Like, she's a big-time basketball player. Now, I'm not talking about – you hear it. I didn't say a big-time women's back. No, she's a big-time basketball player. And it's got that appeal, too. One last thing on the whole uh, tournament that's going on for me. I, 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 love, I love the Cinderella stories. I, love, I want there to be more teams in the tournament, et cetera. But all along, to me, it's, it's just been – it's going to be UConn and Purdue, which probably means it's not. Uh, but what do you like as far as who's left? And I'm sure you have some friends on the teams as well. Do you have any rooting interest that way? No, I don't have – I root for USF. Love it. That's who I root for. But – it's, I, I'd be sitting up here lying if, and saying if I, I look at what NC State's been able to do. And it's phenomenal because it, for it, as a basketball coach, it gives you energy. It gives you, I wouldn't even say hope. It just, like, when you lead with, when you lead with your heart, hmm. you know, when you lead with love for your players, you know at any point in time that thing can change, you know. And to watch them win the games and not only win them, it's not like they're making buzzer beaters, right? Like they're executing, they're dominating, you know, in a sense. And they're playing with a, with a connection, with a togetherness that, man, like when you know that feeling, you, like you can see it. When you've had that feeling before, you can see it. And so to watch them, it's, it's been fun. And, yeah, UConn is, they're elite, man. Like, <laughs> um, you know, in Purdue, they play in a way that, with a guy that, I mean, it's like, how do you defend it? You know, and I thought Tennessee did a dang good job of it. But you think about this, at 7-4 or whatever he is, that dude played 39 minutes and, what, 30, 27 seconds. That's amazing. He only sat down for 33 seconds. Man, that's elite. <laughs> it's fun to watch. One more thing on your team, Coach. You know, you were hired about a year ago, right now, mm -hmm. as we sit in April. So, um, you know, everything you did last year in the summer, the conditioning, for the most part, it was new for all these guys. They were yeah. learning you, you were learning them. A little different this time when you go into the summer. What do you think it'll be like in terms of building your team with, they know you now, you know them, and you maybe know, Look at know which face. buttons to push. <laughs> He's about to push some buttons. <laughs> Hopefully they don't see this and see that smile. Uh, it's it's got to go up, right? Um, we, we can't stay the same. You know, we, we, we've set a standard and an expectation of what we expect and who we are. And in order to not only maintain it, but take it to another level, we've got to push them. And they're prepared for it. They're ready for it um, to be pushed at that level. Because, again, um, when, you're, when you want to be a champion and when you are a champion and you know what it takes, you know, now it's about – it's not just about the conditioning sessions, right? It's not like we're going to do something crazier than we did before. Now it's going to be what is their focus 
going to be during those sessions? Will they, will they treat those conditioning sessions, weight sessions, individual workouts, will they treat it like the game this year? I think they will. Mm -hmm. And now you'll see when they get to practice, practice is way more competitive, way more fun. You know, they won't even realize they've been in there, you know, for an hour or two hours or whatever it's been. When you, when you can get lost in it, and that's the next step for us. Um, it's just being able to get lost in, 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 in the work. I want to say thank you for all the time you've given us. As I'm thanking you, I'm going to ask you to give us just a couple more minutes because I know people appreciate this. I do. Uh, it's cool. What, what have you shared and what have you learned uh, hanging out with Goalish and, and the spring football practices? And then finally, uh, I've seen you you know, become a baseball pitcher now. Going back to the Braves, were you more of a Smoltz, Glavin, or Avery guy? No, I was just a, I was a staff guy. That was the best. That's of course arguably it was. the best staff ever put Maddox, together. Maddox, I should have mentioned. Yeah, golly, I was about to say, how you forget Maddox? <laughs> Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz, Avery, come on, man. You talk, that's a heck of a rotation, you know. But um, no, you know what I've? It's been it's been fun. I actually this morning I was out at uh, women's golf, oh, yeah. man, it was phenomenal. Like just being outside and and um, just watching how they prep, you know the focus you got to have every rep, you know, like I'm going to take, like at some point I'm going to take our guys out there because I want them to see that like that. Right. But, um, I've learned a ton from coach E I've learned a ton from Erica. Um, but being out at football, man, it's been so fun because different sport, but what I've enjoyed the most is watching coach Golish and his staff that like, and, and it just reminds me to keep doing what we're doing because I like I think our energy as a staff, it, our team reflects it. Like, man, watching their team this spring. I went out last spring when I first got here. And it's and it, not that it was bad last spring. You could just tell it was year one. They were going into it. Those guys didn't really know what to expect, kind of going back to right, what you were talking right, about. Right. Now, you go out there, oh, yeah. them dudes are – they are yeah, chomping at the time. bit, none at all. And, and I've been out there on, on a few different um, occasions. One day where, like, they had a little bit of, um, you know, contact, and then I went out there one day when it was a tackle. When it's tackle, whew. I mean, it, but what, what's been the most fun is just watching Coach allow his players to, to lead, you know, watching Byron Brown in that quarterback group. Uh, Izzy Carter, you know, Arch, man, them, they got dudes, man. <laughs> they got some dudes, you know. So it's, but I, what I've learned again is just stay consistent, be who you are. But more importantly, what I think Coach has done the best job of is he's been vulnerable to get up, vulnerable enough to get uncomfortable and share like his energy. Like a lot of head coaches, think about it. We want to be, yeah, no, like. He's he's on like his playlist is elite. Man, he has some, <laughs> man, he has some DMX on that joint. Yeah, I mean, I was out there like, oh, let's go, you know. So I just, you know, just I've just learned to, you know, stay in the moment and be you, be who you are. You don't have to be what everybody thinks a head coach is supposed to look like, you know. Well, we appreciate all they did, and it sounds like you guys are are one of the same, and that's a good thing. That means a lot of wins, yeah. and we want to again say. Thanks for all the memories. We are thank, grateful for you. Thank you. And thank you guys for asking great questions all year, man, and, and really giving our fan base an insight to the team and being around. You know, Joey was on pretty much every trip, man. You know, so – and he was helping with the bags, getting the bags off the plane. He, he, he only got his plate He taken. got me. He got yeah. me on the plate. I he got, got – and, yeah. you know, just <laughs> – you, you don't have anybody wait on you at dinner. Yeah. You, you carry your own plate. I thought he was gone. I let my guard down, and he got come up and got me it. behind. It was. I'm still mad about Good it. Good job. I'm still mad about Good it. Job. Good job. Won't happen again. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be that'll be something we work on for next year. We'll no, try and no. get the questions even more elite. Thanks again. Hey, now remember when you go out to dinner, you gotta let the waiter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I've changed the way I do. They'll it, kick man. you out the restaurant. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I still look at the, the puzzle on the faces of the of the wait staff. Like, what do you mean we can't take pick up your plate? They're, they're, they're generally like, what are you talking about? This is our job. This is, yeah. <laughs> but I get I get the lesson, and the lesson is great. No, it's awesome.
Well, one of the fine young men on his team, Jaden Reed, is going to be our guest next. Continue along. Y'all are talking to the freshman? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Stick around. We have a two-time Super Bowl champ back on campus, and instead of being sidelined, you're courtside tonight. How exciting is it to see the Bulls play some postseason basketball and to host an NIT game? Yeah, this is great, man. Uh, I've been keeping up with them all season. Um, you know, watching them finish 24th in the country. You know, this is an amazing turnout to, to see USF basketball back on the map and USF back on the map in general. So, man, it's grown just from when I was here a few years ago, man, to where it's at right now. It's, uh, I'm so excited to see where this thing goes, especially with the football team and, you know, all athletics. You know, we, we're doing so many great things on all levels, and I'm, I'm, I love it. Anyway, I can come back home and support. I'm always here. Man, it's fantastic. I mean, when I went outside to check on the students before, about two hours before the game, the line was going all the way out to Genshaft Drive. Everybody's out here. They're living. We're bringing back traditions of death row. You got everybody dressed up in SoFlo colors. And it's exciting. You can just feel the excitement here. This, this place is ready to go off. Right when they announced there was another home game possibility, we are like, yes, because you know we're going to pack that house here with SoFlo Rodeo. Once you get to a point, oh, sell out, sell out, sell out. All the student tickets are claimed. Look how early they're showing up. If they're showing up at noon for a 7.30 tip-off, they're excited. That's growth right there. They want to be here. This is the most exciting it's been since, I've been here since 1992. This is unbelievable. To see four sellouts in a row, and the team that Amir's put together, the way they're playing, the SoFlo Rodeo is something I never thought I would see. What a tremendous season. I mean, to remember where we were back in November, a good crowd, a great huge win on the opening night, but then to kind of go through the evolution we've gone, we've had multiple sellouts, crowds every night. It's become the it thing to do. We are Tampa Bay's home for hoops, and most importantly, I'm just excited to see our student body really get behind this team, and it's become a part of the campus culture, and that's what we're going to keep doing next year and beyond. Amir has done just a, a, an amazing job out in the community, out on the campus, He's engaged the students. It's fabulous. I couldn't be happier. Welcome back to Bullseye. Joey Johnston and Kaylee Cottrell. We are joined by USF freshman point guard Jaden Reed, a big part of the AAC championship team who had a brilliant first year. Jaden, I know when you come to college and you're a freshman, not only athletically but yeah. academically, a lot of challenges, a lot of growth. Yeah. What's this year been like for you, a uh, little yeah. kid coming from New York uh, to the big city of Tampa? <laughs> yeah, and yes, what's yeah. it been like for you on and off the court? Um, it's been great, for real. I mean, there's a lot of challenges with going from high school to college, um, a lot of steps you have to make. You have to mature fast, learn to be on your own without your parents. But, I mean, I had a great um, support system here but, um, in terms of my coaches, um, academic advisors, um, professors, everything. Um, so uh, it helped me. It helped me out a lot. Um, I was able to to realize what what life is really about. Uh, how to have priorities, focus on what needs to be done first, and then have fun later. So um, I think I made the change pretty well. And then um, I just gotta keep going, get, getting more mature as I, I go up. You talk about maturity. You sure don't play yeah. like a freshman. What comes over you when you get on the court? <laughs> um, just my confidence. I think from all the work I put in over the years. Um, since I was like six years old, I've been in the gym, um, just proving myself right, um, working hard. So just the hard work um, translate onto the court and my confidence is, I think that's my best ability. Uh, one of my best traits is my confidence, not caring what other people think. So just coming onto the court as a freshman, just playing with a lot of confidence, um, knowing what I can do and proving everybody else wrong that, that doubted me as well. So. Uh, Jaden, when you look at your background, you're not going to be intimidated or overwhelmed by anything, I think, growing up in the New York area yeah, with, with all the swagger that entails, but also where you played high school ball. I mean, the competition level yeah. was tremendous. Speak about where you came from and the kind of players you went up yeah. against to prepare you to come to USF. Yeah, playing basketball in New York, I think it builds you for, even outside of basketball, it builds toughness, mental toughness, um, like that confidence you're saying, like knowing what you can do, because in New York, a lot of people are going to talk bad about you or you're going to be compared to a lot of people. But just knowing your, your self-worth, knowing your own worth, I think that helped me a lot. And Lou High, my high school uh, national team, we were ranked second in the country last year, um, playing all the top schools. I think that, that helped me a lot because I was able, since freshman year, I went there as well, 
playing at that level, practicing every day. I'm one of my best friends, Jaden Ross. He was on my team. He's actually on UConn right now. I think they're probably going to win the national championship um, within the next couple of weeks. Playing against guys like him, VJ Edgecombe, he's going to Baylor, Baylor next year. He's in the McDonald's All-American game tonight, actually. So practicing against guys like that, playing with high-level talent and learning from Coach Buck. Uh, he went to Wake Forest, played with Chris Paul, learning from him. Um, that just, they taught me everything I need to know, preparing me for college. Our, co our practices were, were college-like. The games were college-like atmosphere. So, I mean, coming here was just the next step for me. I was, I was already prepared for it. This is what I expected, and I was, I was, I was good. You have, you've had a lot of high points and a lot of highlights. Yeah. What's been the toughest part? What's been the days where it's, I don't know. Just if you, if in college said, or before? Yeah, in co here at USF. Have yeah. you had days where you doubted yourself? Yeah. Or, um, and and how would you, how'd you adjust? How would you come back from yeah. it? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say doubt, but there were some days where it's like you get there and it's just like, dang, like, it's different. You know, coming from high school, you're the senior. You're, you're, the, older, you're the oldest guy. You're the big man on campus. Um, everybody knows who you are now. Coming here, you're a freshman. You gotta earn your stripes. Um, you're not. Nobody knows what you could do yet. You gotta prove to everybody. Like I said, you gotta prove to everybody. But like early on in the season, you know, there was some. In the summer, I was like, I was good. The workouts were good. I was getting better, feeling like I'm hitting some traction. Then the beginning of the season, you know, those college practices are a little bit different than high school. So you're like, dang, like, this is this is this is this is real. But you know, with the help, like I said, my the support system here. Coaches talking through it, my older teammates, our captains, Jose, CY and them, like, they just kept talking me through it, um, telling me what I need to do, telling me what I need to work on. And then the more you listen, the more you're going to get better, just apply what they're telling you. So, I mean, early on in the season, I would say, I didn't have doubts of myself, like, can I play here or not? It was just like, dang, this is tough. Like, I just, I got to get with the program type, type thing. But I fought through it, and then we had a good season. No matter what you had to fight through, you always did it with a smile yeah. on your face. You're right. one of the most positive guys on the team. Where yeah. does that positivity come from? Um, I think just overall in my life, I learned a lot of lessons. Um, a lot of stuff happened in my life. I, like I said before, like I lost my best friend when I was a sophomore in high school. So going through stuff like that, it, it realizes how, how precious life is and um, like not taking things for granted. So that's something my mom and my goddad, my dad, my grandparents, they all instilled in me just being thankful, being present in the moment. So like every time I go out there, step on the court, whether I have a bad game or a good game, I mean, I'm a, obviously I'm going to be frustrated I have a bad game. We all want to perform well, but at the end of the day, it's a blessing. I'm, I'm at University of South Florida. I'm in Tampa, Florida, 90 degree weather in freaking December. <laughs> so it's like... It's nothing really to be mad about. I'm just grateful for the opportunity. I told Coach Amir all the time, like, I'm just thankful, like, for the opportunity, thankful for this platform. I'm just happy to be able to do what I love, playing basketball, go to school, get a good education, and meet nice people along the way. Jaden, you have discovered what millions of people from the Northeast have learned for decades. Yeah. It's fun to live here. Exactly. <laughs> and I want to live here, and exactly. I don't want to leave. I, I mean, after coming here, I don't think I want to ever go back and live in New York, um, unless my parents are there, but... I got to be somewhere warm for sure. So, Jaden, um, you mentioned you know the ups and downs of being a freshman, and Coach Amir uh, coaches you hard. Yeah, he's on you. He does not let you slack. And I know some days are difficult. Yeah, and he gets in your ear and mm -hmm. he pulls you aside one to one. Yeah, what's the relationship been like? And I know some days yeah. maybe he's not your favorite guy. Yeah, but he's got your best interest in for mind. Sure. So, what's that whole thing been like? Nah, Coach Amir, that's my guy for sure. Um, he took a chance on me when nobody else really wanted to at the end of my high school career after I decommitted. He was one coach that reached out a lot and showed that love for me. So when I came here, I trusted him. He told me everything that he was going to do with me, um, like his plans, and he kept his word. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy. He, he's tough. It's tough love, though. I mean, in practice, at, at, in the moment, you're like, dang, like, he's on me. Like, I just did something good, and he's still yelling. It's, it's never enough, but, like, he just wants you to be – like better than I can even imagine myself, like pushing me to my, my limits. Like he always tells me he doesn't think I know how good I can be. Like he sees it, but he doesn't think I see it in myself yet. So just listening to him, you know, it's paid off. As you guys have seen this season, you know, as a freshman, a lot of people don't play freshman, um, especially at a high level. So he gave me that opportunity. So I felt that trust for him early. And, you know, just listening to him, like I said, trusting him, um, him giving me the confidence every day in practice, throwing me in the games, even when I mess up. I have a turnover, 
I'm still in the game. So like a lot, a lot of coaches are not doing that, like I said. So yeah, Coach Amir is my guy. Um, and it's bigger than basketball with Coach Amir, too. Um, he's just not a basketball coach. I think he's a life coach for me. You know, he teaches me a lot of lessons outside the basketball court, how to be a man, like how to be a father figure. Like when I, when I get to that, that stage, he always tells us how to be a good husband to, to his wife and his family. So it's just a lot of outside lessons that he teaches us that are not just basketball, which I think is more important than basketball because at some point basketball is going to stop and you're going to need those valuable lessons. Not only your coach, but also your teammates. Yeah. I mean, talk about your relationship with maybe some of the older guys as well, yeah. because this team, you know, a group of strangers, a group of transfers, this yeah. new staff, new team, yeah. you guys look like you've been playing together forever. Mm -hmm. How was that able to happen? Yeah, in the summer when we came, it was funny. A lot of people, we were all new, like you said, a lot of people, we didn't really talk, or it was just like, we just kind of figuring out everybody, but... Coach Amir told us, like, be intentional about your relationships. Um, it's going to go a long way. So, you know, my roommates, CY, Casey and Jennings, they're both um, older seniors, and they, they've helped me out a lot. I ride with CY to the gym almost every day, him and, him and KJ. Um, and we're just talking about, like, not only basketball, but, like, just life, uh, how we're doing and stuff like that. And I think that was also a big part in why I did pretty good this year, because I knew I had seniors that had my back, um, seniors that had been through it before. So they paved the way for me. They know what it's like. So them telling me what I have to do um, helped a lot. I, I worked out with Jose, Jose Placer. Um, he was a six-year senior, so he been through it. Um, he knows what it takes, um, what the work looks like. I worked out with him every day. Um, Celta Miguel, he's probably one of my closest guys on the team that I hang out with a lot. And, you know, he, he always tell me mentality. Me and Cell connect a lot because we have the same mentality, I think. We think a lot alike. So, Cell just, whenever I'm practice, I, I would get down on myself. He like, keep your head up, like, next play, things like that. So, I just had a bunch of, of seniors that cared. You know, places seniors don't, really don't care about freshmen. They just want to do their own thing and, and get to the next level. But the seniors here, they, they care for me. They told me what I need to do. And yeah. Jaden, I'm going to let you in on a little secret about Kaylee. That she's not going to brag on herself, mm -hmm. but she was a very accomplished dancer growing okay. up, performed in front of a lot of people around mm -hmm. the country. You're a performer. Now yeah. you performed before basketball crowds, but you're you're you you want to be an actor. Yes, You've been in plays. You've yeah. sung before people. Mm -hmm. You know what it's like when that curtain opens and, <laughs> right. and you got to deliver. Yeah. So tell us about that aspect of your life, even yeah. beyond basketball. A lot of people don't know it, but it's different. <laughs> but I enjoy it though, because it's something other than basketball. Like I said, the basketball stops, but it's a different feeling. It's a different type of performance. You know, basketball. You know, you train for it your whole life. So I think. Like I'm, I'm well prepared for when I say I'll go into basketball games, but that stuff, I was like a little bit more nervous when I do things like that. But you know, I, I prepare for that too. Like with my instrument, I used to practice, even singing, choir practice, um, and then acting. You just, it's just a flow for me. Um, just being in front of the camera is just the flow and just your personality. I think my personality um, helps me to a lot of those things. Like, my, like I said before, you can't care what a lot of people think. So some people are nervous to get in front of cameras. Um, and do things outside of their comfort zone. But I think one thing about me and my confidence, like I really don't care if you think I'm not doing a good job or like how you felt about my performance. As long as I know what I did and I feel good about myself, then that's all that matters. Well, I'm hopeful that one day we can have a little song and dance duo yeah. here between Jay and Kayla. For sure, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I think sure. the crowd would, would enjoy that. Yeah, I know course, I would. Of course. So uh, one, one final thing, Jaden, uh, about next year. You know, I know you're, you have great goals. The yeah. team does to go to the NCAA and mm -hmm. you to continue to improve as a player. Right. What's your mindset going into this summer? How hard you're going to work? And yeah. then uh, what, what kind of player we're going to see on the court next year? Um, yeah, this summer is going to be big. Um, you know, I was kind of mad that we didn't make the tournament. Just watching it the past couple of weeks, it just lights that fire into you. Like, we can't miss it next year. We, we have to get there. So... But it doesn't start next season, it starts now. Like, as soon as I came back from vacation, I was in the gym, two, two weight room workouts yesterday. So um, I'm focusing for next year, my strength, obviously, being small, I gotta, gotta get stronger. And then just me, leadership for me, uh, you know, some of the seniors are gonna be gone, Jose's gonna be gone next year. So just stepping into, even though I'm still gonna be kind of young as a sophomore, one of the more younger guys on the team, just being more of a leader, more vocal, um, and just establishing myself more, you feel me? Um, on the court, same type of player. I'm gonna bring energy, um, just, but everything is just gonna be better. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna work on my skills, obviously, ball handling, shooting, 
um, defense. But overall, just, just the aura I have, the energy that I bring, I just want to have more of an uh, impact on the court, you know what I'm saying? Um, around the community as well, because um, it's bigger than basketball. But yeah, next season, for sure, we're going we're gonna to get there to the tournament. Well, we have enjoyed watching you play. We can't wait to see what's in store, and we hope that when you make it big as an actor, you'll remember us. Of course. And we can come to some of your tapings and your shows. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Jaden Reed, point guard of the USF Bulls. Stay tuned. We'll have much more coming up on Bullseye. Here on the outdoor track and field side of things, Derek Sharp with Nate Metellus of the track and field team. My man right here, transfer from Bethune-Cookman, who is a, a beach guy. I guess you like both sides of the state. Grew up in Deerfield Beach, right? Went to yes. school at Daytona Beach. Do you like the beach or is it just happened to be where you've grown up? <laughs> um, it happened to be, where I, well, both actually. <laughs> yeah. Like um, the beach side is always good, you know. I can, you know, relax at the beach and, uh, you know, just chill, what's, meet new people. What's the uh, scene? I've never been to Deerfield Beach. Picture it for me. Oh, the scenery is nice. Like, if you're looking at Deerfield, it's like a uh, it's a good area. It's nice with all the restaurants too. Yeah. Um, near the beach, and um, I mean, you'll have a you'll have a good time when you're there for sure. We'll have to go. Um, yeah. Well, we'll get to track here in a second, and the, the men and the women are hosting the South Florida Invitational this weekend. My man's going to be running Friday with his relay guys and by himself, but never by himself. But now i got to ask you, you restaurants, I'm, I'm a food guy. Are you a seafood guy? It sounds like you have I'm, to be. I'm a seafood guy, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Take, uh, what, like, give me a top, top three. Uh, I like crab legs and shrimp. Oh, that's too much work, though. Crab legs, is it too much work? Mm -mm, not no. to be. Worth nah. it, worth it. Crab legs. Uh, Fried shrimp, I like fried oh, shrimp yeah. as well. Kind of have to go that way. Do you uh, like coconut shrimp? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I went to town on some the other day. It's good. Like you can't, <laughs> let's get into the nutrition part because I guess you can't eat a lot of coconut shrimp and fried shrimp during the season. What's it like the discipline that it takes to uh, be in track shape? To be in track shape? I mean, I always like to be healthy, you know. Like um, my, my body needs a lot of uh, nutrients that can like, you know, fill me up. But like, I'm not always eating like junk food because I know if I eat junk food, like I'll mess myself up. But like, at the same time, I'm disciplined enough to eat healthy, always. So you have the self-discipline. Do your coaches ever have to remind you or it sounds like you've got it under control? Nah, I already know. <laughs> I already know what to do. All right, so when the season ends and we're not there yet, you, do, you, do you gain a few pounds at least? Yeah, I gain pounds, yeah, I gain pounds, and then, like, when I'm running, like, for some reason, like, it'll drop for some reason, like, when I'm running, because I'm, I'm losing a lot of calories when I'm running. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. that makes sense, and this guy doesn't do the sprints, he does the, has it always been this way, more of the, the middle distance? Um, both, like, sprints, I've been doing sprints, too, but, um, I'm on, like, on the middle distance side, like, the 400 is my peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> and back to the food references, but that's a good thing. So, uh, yeah, you were the indoor track and field champ. Of course, we're outdoor here on a windy day, so let's get into the differences between the indoor and the outdoor, other than the obvious weather conditions. It's usually a shorter track, right? How does that affect things, or uh, does it very much? Okay, indoor track, indoor track is like very like, kind of like, I don't know, like difficult, because like the curves is very tight and stuff. Even though it's a 50 meter track all around, it's still like, you know, very hard. And then the humidity that's in the up area is like very hard to breathe in too. But I mean, it's an honor to be a um, 400 meter indoor champ either way. But um, after the hard work and dedication I put into the track, like, you know, like I'm not more of a indoor person, sure. but me as, a, me as a person, I'm always like, always wanting to win, you feel me? Like, well, that's amazing that yeah. you're not an indoor person, but you're the champ. And I, it's yeah. interesting also that you bring up the humidity because you wouldn't think about that, but you got a bunch of people uh, sweating in a yes. small, small area. What was it like actually, take us back through that moment, getting the trophy and winning as a team, not just as an individual? Everybody did not like expect me to, like, to win it. Everybody didn't expect me to win it. And then like um, me, I was just like so like hungry for like a championship. When it comes down to the like, championship meets, mm. I'm just have that mindset of a beast, dog mentality. Yeah, dog mentality. I got the good. I got the dog mentality huh. to 
win a championship when it comes to these championships. You know, you, you're as fast as you can be, uh, but is there also a mental side to it where you have to, and it's not a long amount of time, obviously, it's less than a minute, where you have to tell yourself, you got to find it, you got to go faster, Nate. Yeah. Take us through that part of it. Is there some mental to track and field? Just for yeah, it's a, it's a lot of mental to track and field. Like, um, sometimes I'll pray before my race. Sure. I'll say like a, a Baba verse in my head, like during like, once um in the blocks, I'll say a Baba verse in my head. And then after that, when the gun goes off, I'm out. Not think about nothing. Not think about the person who's in front of me, the person who's behind me and then like that. I'm just running my own race at the same time, but like, it is a mental thing though. That's incredible. Now, um, do you get, I mean, I got, I'm, trying to picture it. You went to Bethune Cook and you did great stuff for them last year and of course mm -hmm. here with the Bulls. Do you get a medal when whenever you're on the podium, whenever you're top three? What do you get a medal for? Because I'm asking the question to, to, to ask you how many medals you have. I mean Bethune I remember one medal I had at Bethune was like uh, it was for like a distance melody in uh, uh -huh. the SWAC championships. That's go. the like that's the only medal I had got okay. so far. And then after that I didn't like win no other medals, but, but you, I was one of the best people on the team. But you got a big trophy as a team, so that's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, he's part of the 4 by speaking of teams, 4 by 4 relay, and uh, third on the leg that set the school record after, in prelims, they set it, and then they set it by three seconds. That's amazing. Secondly, I always carry a baton in my pocket, thank goodness. So tell me the secret to a good baton pass, because that's a big part of it, right? All right, Coach Jenkins taught me this. All right. Okay, when Coach we get Jenkins the baton, some love here. when you get the baton, go catch. Okay, when you, when you pass the baton, it's like every time you like close to the uh, person, just punch it in their hand and then go. And it's get, and from from handoff to actually getting it and going. It's it's is it a smooth like flowing process or is it just quick? It's just quick. Like, All right. Oh, I would be dropping it left and right. I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you guys are much better than me. Coach at Jenkins, it. go catch. <laughs> go yes. catch. Is that um, really the, the actual handoff? Is that something that can? We're, we're talking about sometimes not even tenths of seconds. We're like doing about, the race? Yeah, thousands oh, nah. of seconds. Can can nah. that can that improve things a little bit? I mean, we don't we don't do that in the race. We don't say go catch during the race. Okay, we just okay. like uh, we just have our marks and then. Sure. Um, you know, we go, and then when they're ready for it, uh, they get the baton. Man, I'm glad. Now, can the wind affect that uh, at all? And can can the wind help you or hurt you during uh, just 400 meters in general? Is it tough to tough to, to fight through, or do you like it? Do you like challenges? I mean, I like challenges. It's, <laughs> it's light work. The wind ain't going to affect me. Uh. Um, I mean... Well, I mean, sometimes like headwinds, like they could like, but I'm tough enough to like fight the wind. I'm so. gonna say he's doing an interview during the wind right now. It's not affecting him whatsoever. Yeah, it's All right. not. All right, so uh, other than you being with that dog mentality, if people want to come out and watch you guys, you're gonna be uh, running on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a relay team full of dog mentality? What can they look forward to? What kind of team? Uh, not just the four by four, but the the whole Bulls team. How would you describe your group? You Everybody have? is a dog. <laughs> you got dogs everywhere. You guys want to come out and watch the dogs this weekend? Yes. Nate, it was a pleasure. Thanks. And uh, you're about a month away from a boatload of coconut shrimp, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> coconut shrimp. Coconut shrimp. Yeah, that's good. All right, passing the baton. Actually, this guy does everything but run. He does all the jumping. Well, you, you do some running there, too. Goodness. I, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Goodness, he has been doing a lot in his first year. And I'm gonna make you blush just a little bit. We had Eric Jenkins on this show before the season started. And I, you know, he's not gonna run down a bunch of names and, and give people that are new any sort of big head. But he mentioned your name as a big addition to the team. Yeah. So I ask you, how bad he did he recruit you here? I mean, I'm sure he wanted you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he 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 called me and talked to me about the program that this is a um, building program. And I was like, um, I would like to see what the team is doing and how good the team is. And it was like, um, they have uh, new people coming in. And when I checked the school page, I saw like a bunch of people getting recruited. So I was like, oh, I would like to be part of this program. Hmm. And also he called my coach in my other school, like 
checking up on me on how my behavior is, how good I am, and yeah. Seems like your behavior is pretty good. By the way, <laughs> as the wind picks up here, we're in the outdoor track and field season, uh, but it's gonna be perfect weather this weekend, and you can see Goodness and his teammates uh, Friday and Saturday at the South Florida Invitational. Yeah. Now, your first school was Cumberland, not the one in uh, Georgia, Bulls football fans, but the one in Tennessee. Yep. And how did you find that place as you were moving from Nigeria, correct? Yeah, I mean, it was very, it was cold actually. <laughs> very, very cold. Because back home, I think it was cold, but like not as cold as the one in Tennessee. So I had to, I was so thankful that it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't snow when I was there. <laughs> It didn't snow, so um, I was able to like endure. That sometimes we don't practice a uh, track because my school we don't have a track, so we have to like practice inside our office. Wait a sec, I'm sorry. Your school where didn't have a track? In Tennessee, Lebanon. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, so we didn't have a track back then. We practiced in our high school, so when it gets extremely cold, we don't go we don't go outside to practice. We just practice inside our like uh, the coaching office. So I just I managed, I endured, and I survived in advance, and I'm here. Whoa. We're going to get back to the South Florida stuff here in a second. <laughs> I'm trying to picture doing the high jump in a coach's office. <laughs> you didn't actually have a bar in there, did you? I mean, we did because we kept it in there, but uh, it's just like a basic circuit in okay. the office. <laughs> and we're not that much. We're like probably like 20 some. Hey, got you ready for the indoor yeah. season. <laughs> uh, no wonder you were so good and set the school record right out the gate. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure you're not going out there thinking, Okay, I got to do a school record. What are you? What are you looking at? I'm sure improving every single time out. Uh, <laughs> I basically just go for track meets and just be like, um, I just want to do like better than I did the last time. But though I'm, I have like high expectation, but if I don't meet it, at least I broke my previous PB, my um, previous competition. Hmm. And I just try to like, you know, put God first in everything I do, and just um, keep my head straight. Talk to my when I, whenever I feel like down, I call my mom or call my brother or call my friend back home, nice. and just like try to like settle myself down. Well, what was the what was the transition like? You know, and we take it for granted. We have so many international students here. I I do women's basketball and they're all international, and you almost forget that these are journeys that people go on. Uh, getting used to life in the United States was it difficult? Did you call home a lot? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I literally I left home when I was like um, 15 because I finished high school on time. So I was kind of pressed that like, I, I've always wanted to like get out of my, my parents' house. I've always wanted to go home. So when I came here, it was like kind of good You're ready in a way. It. I was ready for it and I was, I've been home for like, out of home for like two years mm. when I was back home. And so I, I, I got used to it so quickly. People come here and be like, oh, I miss home. I miss my family. I do miss my family though, but like, I don't plan on going back anytime soon. Mm. Well, we're glad that you found a new family here. I'm oh, guessing. yeah, I do. Anyway. <laughs> uh, we got to ask about the name because his first name is Goodness. Yeah. Uh, was that, would you have a bunch of cool names? How many brothers and sisters did you have? I'm sure your name was the coolest. Oh, I th yeah, my name is the coolest because uh, my name is Goodness, but my mom calls me Goody. I like that. My brother's name is Gift. My sister's name is Merit. There's Treasure, there's Preville. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's some pretty good competition for coolest name. Yeah, so I have like I have five siblings. Well, six in our house. Uh, three boys, three girls. I'm yeah. the last boy, and I have like three other sisters. Wow, that's awesome. Now he, uh, for a minute, had the top triple jump right, yeah. in the country. Now you're fifth. We should point out that the leader in the nation's name is excellentness, yep. and then there's greatness after him, and then there's superiorness. No, just kidding. Uh, but <laughs> we, you, fifth, you realize that fifth is still okay, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. Now, triple high long jump. You competed in all three at the indoor track conference meet. Yeah. So I ask you, you could not have been full go for all of those. <laughs> you had to have been getting tired. Do your legs get tired? I mean, yeah, because there are different jumpers that like do like specific event, like probably start off with the triple jump with the left leg, then do the long jump with the right leg. But me personally, I do high jump with my right leg, triple with my right leg, long with my right leg. So definitely I was tired. But I got to say, is your right leg a lot bigger than your left leg? <laughs> so how, how many actual jumps? I know you, you, you have three attempts oh yeah you usually just say I'm good after one how many how many actual jumps do you think you did that day? Um, I think I did like <laughs> the first day was like uh, I did high jump and long jump the first day mm -hmm. so I took like probably five jump and high jump okay then six jump and are they the spread are they spaced out okay oh yeah okay 
So I have to like take one jump, then wait for like probably like 11 more people to jump, then okay. I come back. That's a good, good yeah. amount of time. Uh, now, uh, you also won the long jump up in Gainesville. We'll talk about the oh, yeah. uh, experiences you've had just so far here. Uh, Cumberland, I'm guessing, maybe smaller meets, but yeah. you guys are going all over the country. Oh, yeah, How do you always. like that? I mean, I like, I, me in particular, I like um, traveling a lot. Hmm. I mean, this track and field has like, exposed me to like moving out of the country because if I hadn't like, started track and field, Probably I would, I would still be back in my country right now doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So this track and field has like uh, exposed me to like travel to different kind of states. I didn't even picture myself coming to Florida in the first place, but I'm here, and uh, the experience has been great and excellent. You like it here? I, I love it here. It's like the weather's like Nigeria. That's why I chose. Is that Florida. right? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. How about the food here? Uh, oh no, 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 it's good. I it's cook good. my own food. The food is it's not good. It's it's not good. You hear that, folks? It's not good. <laughs> okay, tell me what good food is, goodness. Since you would know you're goody and all that. I see. Everyone's going to know there's jello fries, the best Nigerian. What one. kind of fries? Jello fries. Okay, jello fries? Jello fries. You I need, need to hear about this. Yeah, you need to try some. The best jello It's better than Ghanaian because we have a competition with Ghanaians, huh? which is Rashid. They know about Rashid. <laughs> We have come to Ghanaians, their jello fries is not better than ours. All right. There's okay. jello fries, we have like white rice and stew, we have Ooh, yeah. a bar, we have mm. a goosey soup, a lot of delicious food. Do you get any of that here, is it? No, I just make stew and rice. Because that's wow. the only thing I can get in contact with. Well, you're making, making me hungry. <laughs> you're making me realize that you might be right, except for the part that the food is not good here, but we'll, we'll, go, we'll talk about that later. Uh, no problem. Thank you, Goody, very much. Thank very much. Nice. All right. Full time will wrap up when we come back. Well, that was pretty fun. Track and field will actually be at home this weekend, so a chance to come out and see them. Uh, you heard Amir Abdurrahim mention Melanie Green. She is hopefully going to be playing in the finals of an event, the National Women's Amateur in Augusta, and then the women's golf team is expected to go far in the NCAA tournament as we're talking about all this postseason stuff. Uh, we've also got baseball and softball going on. Next week will be our first softball show on Bullseye with head coach Ken Erickson and more great guests to come. So as we wrap it up uh, with the men's basketball thing, and of course, <laughs> we didn't make him recreate It's like telling a comedian, hey, tell your favorite joke. Just lay it out. So his most famous moment, we all know it. This ain't the same old South Florida, my brother. So was brother, there, brother. yeah, you got to say it the right way. Yeah, and that was who knew the the backdrop of that, by the way, was somebody needing more electrolytes because they showed the whole yeah. video yeah. and he brought up Corey Walker. I mean, he might have been the guy. Yeah. He might have been the guy in those first practices, and he you bet, they're gonna be cramping. Yeah. This ain't the same old South Florida, my brother, which turned out to mean so many more things. But he going hey, just so you know, he gonna cramp with this tempo. This ain't the same old South Florida, my brother, so you better get them electrolytes ready. So from a basketball performance point of view, I'm going to ask everybody, and I'm going to go last because I can't think of it right now. What was your moment when you realized <laughs> this wasn't the same old South Florida? My brother. My brother, my bro which I, I, I seriously love that quote. Part of it. Um, so I, I will go back to, you know, you, privilege to be part of the whole season, the ups and downs, all the trips, and some things you forget, but some things stick in your mind and this is mine uh the bulls are two and four they are the same old south florida my brother at that point in a lot of people's minds and we are in sunrise playing florida state mm -hmm. looking at two and five squarely in the face um chris youngblood is three of 22 with 11 straight misses the team is shooting 24 percent from three-point range at that point jim lighthall and i are in the lobby interviewing amir abdul rahim as we do every game and um, we asked our questions, we're done. And he said, and not to pat ourselves on the back, he goes, hey, man, I just appreciate you guys asking the questions. You're prepared. You're, you know, I like interacting with you guys. And, you know, we're still getting to know the coach at that yeah. point. So we're, we're just chatting. And um, I said, you know, coach, um, CY is struggling, and the, the whole team is really struggling from three. Um, what do you think? And he, he just it wasn't adversarial. It wasn't, I'll show you. Mm. He just said, the shots will fall. <laughs> the shots will fall. Did you believe him? 
I did in a few hours when we went out and blitzed Florida State and the shots fell and the shots kept falling. And I looked this up. At that point, USF was shooting 24% from three. From the Florida State on, we shot 42% from three the rest of the season, <laughs> which is incredible. So it was at that moment I felt something come over me that this guy kind of had a, had a confidence about him. And from that point on, it wasn't the same old South Florida, my brother. And I'll, I'll let you think for another second and yeah. remind people that he wrote a great article summing up everything about the season. And one of the many things that they set the school record for, every types of wins, actual wins, conference wins, road wins, three-point makes, which again, yeah. he, he knew three, what was coming, I suppose. Three-point makes. I mean, the, if you look at the last few years of the program, one thing that you really couldn't hang your hat on at all was winning on the road and shooting from three. Those areas were very deficient for the most part. Uh, a, a, a game would pop up here and there, but the ability to go on the road and win consistently has never happened hmm. for this recent program. It's never happened, and now not only did they win, they, they won seven in a row. They won eight overall, setting a program record. So these are, these are things that championship programs do. And another part of that was uh, it was the first time since so basically in almost 15 years that they had uh, more assists right. and turnovers, and it was like 150 more, which was ridiculous. So, Cry, I've given you time to think. Yeah. What was your moment, Kaylee? You know, one of the biggest things that stands out in my mind was that Charlotte game, mm -hmm. that first oh sellout. I had never experienced anything like that, and that's when I kind of took a minute. Nine o'clock on a Tuesday. To take it all in. Nine o'clock on yeah. a Tuesday. That's your bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> to take it all in and be like, this is different this I have never seen this I have never felt the support the everything and, and um, also for me personally going on that one trip to North Texas was very special for me I loved that and and that was another time where it kind of clicked where I saw the guys together really and could see the culture change mm. the brotherhood the the laughs the smiles that these guys all had together and you know we talk about Corey and how he's been smiling all season and the hug that that he gave me after that last home game um, you could really tell how much this season meant to him so to see that brotherhood and you know, that make a difference in the guys' lives as wow. well. That's a great those one. Are, those are two special moments for well, me. Well, it kind of, I'll tie them in both because you mentioned Charlotte. That was uh, as I was out there on the court after the game was over, and it was after midnight. And I'm thinking, <laughs> no, I didn't even think. This was the only time I've been in the Yingling Center after midnight because our <laughs> games are usually over at 9 o'clock. Uh, but that team had me so inspired to be there. But also, you bring up North Texas, and that's what I was going to bring up because they had these big comeback wins. Uh, at home, and then of course at Memphis, and they followed that up by solidifying it with a couple of home wins. But then I'm thinking, okay, they're going to go to North Texas. This is where you slip up. This is just natural. This is a very difficult team, one that's been knocking on the door of the NCAA tournament. And it was a slog of a game. It wasn't a pretty three-point shooting game, mm -hmm. and they won it. And that is not a game that the old South Florida would have won, and they did. So uh, we could go on and on. I have one more on Please the, do. which reminds me, and I think you might have found this uh, audio. Jim and I are doing the game. We're at Rice and uh, just playing a poor first half, down 13, I think it was. <laughs> Came right out of the gate, hitting shots, just erased the lead or caught, caught, got within one, and we had a break. And I remember saying off the air, and I think you heard the cue, and I go, Jim, are we doing this again? Yes, yes. <laughs> I just, stole that. It was just astounding to me that just, just okay, let's, let's come back and win. You know, that's just the way it became. You guys had a lot of off-air stuff yeah, in sure. crisis that I'm privileged <laughs> to hear. Hopefully, uh, no. some of that you might not put during, No, uh, during the rice comeback, when Casey Pryor was doing his thing, Jim said a two-word phrase, and you can think about it, but we won't talk about it here. They had so many phrases this year that were memorable, and we love bringing them to you here on Bullseye. We're not done with the actual show. Well, this show we are done with. Uh, we want to thank all of our guests. Next week we'll concentrate on softball, and we got some more baseball with Billy Mole and Ken Erickson throughout the course of the rest of the spring. Hey, keep those horns up for Kaylee and Joey. I'm Derek Sharp. Thanks for checking us out.